Prince of the Nile, the story of Moses. Ancient Egypt was once ruled by Pharaoh Ramesses II. He was the most powerful ruler in the world and the most hated for his cruel ways. One day, Pharaoh became concerned by the increase in the number of his Hebrew slaves. Unless the Hebrews are reduced in numbers, there could be an uprising of the slaves. Hmm. I must do something. I have it. <laughs> I hereby pronounce a new law. Every son born unto a Hebrew will be cast into the River Nile, declared the heartless Pharaoh. So a law was passed that every newborn Hebrew boy was to be killed. The poor slaves were forced to obey Pharaoh's cruel law. One Hebrew mother devised a plan to save her baby son. She had seen Pharaoh's daughter washing in the river, and believing that the princess was a kind woman, she gently laid her son in a basket and floated him toward her. God of Abraham, take my child into thy care, that he may live to thy service. Farewell, little one, she prayed. What is this? A baby! Oh, he's beautiful! declared the princess as she picked up the baby from the basket. She could see that he was a Hebrew, but the kind princess decided to keep him anyway and raise him as her own. Amun, meet your new brother. I will call him Moses, she announced. As the years passed, the two boys grew up as brothers, but they were very different. Amun was mean to the slaves, while Moses was kind and did whatever he could do to protect them. When Amun tried to ride the slaves like horses, Moses challenged him to a foot race, carrying the slaves on their backs instead. And when Amun tripped a slave in front of Pharaoh, Moses assumed the blame to spare the slave's life. Moses was beloved by the slaves. At dinner, he even thanked them by name. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Daniel. Moses! Do you know the name of every slave in Egypt? Asked Pharaoh scornfully. They are good people, Pharaoh. They don't deserve to be enslaved, said Moses. This kind of talk upset Pharaoh, and the princess was afraid that Pharaoh would kill Moses for saying such treasonous things. But Moses would not give up. Understand this, boy. The Hebrews are our slaves, and so shall it remain forever, shouted Pharaoh. Amun was angry at Moses for his continuous talk about freeing the slaves. One day, the two boys began to fight, and Amun tumbled down the stairs along with a slave girl. When Moses went to comfort the slave before he attended to Amun, it was all Amun could bear. You care more for your Hebrews than you do for me. I am not your brother. I want no more to do with you. Pharaoh shall hear of this, declared Amun. Years passed, and the boys grew into adults. Moses continued to help the slaves, and Amun continued to undermine his efforts. One day, Amun thought Moses was acting even more strangely than ever and decided to follow him on one of his walks outside the palace. Amun followed Moses into the barren, desolate mountains. As he approached, he could hear Moses talking to someone. Help me, Lord. I know not what to do, pleaded Moses. As Amun got nearer, he saw it was a burning bush that Moses spoke to, a bush that burned but was not consumed. Then Moses' staff turned into a beautiful snake. Amun wanted that magic staff. Moses turned and saw Amun. Amun grabbed the staff and tried to turn it into a snake, but it didn't work. I saw you. I saw the snake in the burning bush, stammered Amun. Moses was relieved and actually happy that he now had someone with whom he could share his secret. 
Moses told Amun that it was God who was speaking to him and that the staff was a symbol of God's mighty power. But Amun was convinced it was trickery. God has come to me and chosen me. I am to lead every slave out of Egypt, Moses declared solemnly. Moses, no one man can do that. Pharaoh will kill you, grandson or not. He will not let you lead the slaves out of Egypt, responded Amun. Moses could not say how he would do it or why he was chosen, but he had made a sacred promise to God. When Moses said that God had also told him that Amun was going to help him on his quest, Amun became enraged. What? I'm an Egyptian. Why would I help you in some Hebrew plot against my own country? Asked Amun. Again, he grabbed the staff. This time it did turn into a snake and bit him. Pharaoh will hear of this, all of it, Amun screamed. The story was quite amusing to Pharaoh until Moses appeared. My brother speaks the truth. I have been commanded by God to lead the slaves out of Egypt. You must let my people go, said Moses. You command me, screamed Pharaoh. The princess stood up to defend Moses, but Moses continued. Unless you release the slaves, dreadful things will happen to Egypt. Pharaoh quickly became annoyed at Moses' threats. But before he could punish Moses, the princess again came to Moses' defense. But Moses would not give up. Understand, Pharaoh. I have power. Great and mighty power. Behold declared Moses, as his staff became a snake. Pharaoh thought it was a joke, and the three caught magicians transformed their own sticks into snakes that attacked Moses' snake. Moses' snake easily defeated the magician's snakes. This is just cheap trickery. Be gone from here, and never talk of the slaves again, warned Pharaoh. Moses was unsure, so he went back to the burning bush to ask for God's help. Moses, through me your hand is strong. Go forth and free the slaves. None can stand in your way, spoke the voice of God. With more determination than ever, Moses returned to the palace. Let my people go, he demanded again. Pharaoh refused, and so Moses raised his staff and a multitude of frogs appeared. The court magicians tried everything, but they couldn't make the frogs disappear. So Pharaoh placed Moses under house arrest. When the plague of frogs became too much to bear, Pharaoh again called for Moses. Enough is enough. Get rid of the frogs, he ordered. Moses raised his staff, and immediately the frogs disappeared. Again, Moses demanded, let my people go. You will be affected by many plagues unless you allow my people to go free. Pharaoh refused. Curse you, Moses. Guards, take him back to his quarters, he commanded. Then torrential rain began to pour down from the sky. After three days, mold began to grow over everything and everyone. Pharaoh and his magicians were powerless. Only when the mold began to make Pharaoh sneeze did he call for Moses to make it stop. Let my people go, demanded Moses defiantly. And again he raised his staff. This time hordes of rats appeared and overran the palace. Take him away, ordered Pharaoh again. This time Amun came forward to plead with Pharaoh. Amun, I wouldn't have thought you'd be scared of a few rats. Oh, this is just cheap trickery. Moses will soon give up. You mark my words. Now go, leave me, replied Pharaoh. Rain, rats, mold. Amun could no longer stand by and watch the suffering. He was now convinced of the power of Moses' God and knew that he had to stand by his brother. We will go to Pharaoh together. And together we shall plead for free passage for the slaves, he promised Moses. Together they appeared before Pharaoh. Pharaoh's own flesh and blood had turned against him, and he was furious. 
No, Pharaoh. I'm not against you. I am with what is right. Witness the power of the God of Moses. Pharaoh, this is the way, insisted Amun. Pharaoh had reached the end of his patience. He would end the torment once and for all. Guards! Arrest Moses and Amun! Throw them into jail! You will both be executed tomorrow morning! Take them away! He ordered as he snatched the staff from Moses. Inside their cell, Amun was becoming discouraged until Moses' staff appeared before them. See, God did not forget us. Sleep now, Amun. Our God will protect us, assured Moses. Just then, the burning bush also appeared, and with it, the voice of God to guide the way. Moses was to ready his people for travel. Tell them to prepare a special meal and give thanks. For tonight, the eldest Egyptian children will fall sick. My punishment will pass over my people, and they will be spared. Have them mark their doors with red, and tell them to stay inside until you give the sign. Spoke the voice of God. It shall be, Lord, replied Moses, and the word spread swiftly among the Hebrews. Pharaoh called Moses and Amun before him and asked, Do you have any last words? Moses made one final statement. God made men, and men made slaves, but all men are created equal, and you and your people must now face God. Then he raised his staff, and swarms of locusts appeared. And with the locusts came a powerful wind that destroyed only the houses of the Egyptians, sparing the houses of the Hebrews. Watching from the palace, Pharaoh shouted, We're all going to die! Just then, Moses stepped forward and raised his staff, and the wind stopped. Egyptian families rushed into the palace to plead with Pharaoh. Our children are sick with a terrible fever! They're dying! It is his doing, Moses and his God! Save our children, Pharaoh! Give him what he wants! They all begged, pointing at Moses. Pharaoh finally gave in. Enough! Go! Leave! Take your Hebrew slaves, take Amun, and get out of Egypt! He shouted at Moses. Your children will be well. Moses promised the Egyptian families. The princess was heartbroken to be losing both of her sons. Mother. We must do as God commands, comforted Amun. And all the slaves gathered to follow Moses and Amun to freedom. But while they traveled towards the Red Sea, Pharaoh was planning his revenge. How dare that upstart Hebrew slave treat me like that? Me! I will not let Moses get away with insulting me so grievously, cried Pharaoh and he sent his entire army out after Moses and the slaves, with the order to kill every single one. When Moses came to the Red Sea, he decided that they should set up camp and cross in the morning. The Red Sea was deep, and when asked how they would cross, Moses had only one answer. God will provide. In the morning, the slaves saw that the Egyptian army was near. They panicked and began to doubt Moses. Amun tried to calm the crowd and said, Has Moses ever let you down? Has Moses ever lied to you? Not one of you will die here today. Moses and God will take care of us. Moses waited for the word of God. Moses, pass your staff over the waters and lead your people into the Red Sea, said the voice of God. Moses passed his staff over the water as God advised, and miraculously the sea parted. Go forth into the sea! Go! shouted Moses. The Hebrews scrambled to cross with the army at their heels. As the last slave reached the other side to freedom, the sea closed, consuming the Pharaoh and his army. We're safe! We are free! shouted the freed Hebrews. The Prince of the Nile had delivered his people. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da.
Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da